We spoke a lot this week about um, confusion before Mashiach. I'd just like to end off um, by speaking a few minutes about uh, my, my uh, Rosh Hashiva, my first Rosh Hashiva as a bucker. I was over to learn for five years in Taras Malaysia. And I got a phone call yesterday inviting me to come there, um, speak there on Shabbos. So I think I must speak about a certain Mida that um, Rav Moshe Meiselman, that I was okay to get from him, um, you know, obviously not as strong as him, but a Talmud will, um, hopefully, if he's smart, take from his Rebbe. And what I really took from Rav Moshe Meiselman is the Mida of Emes and Clarity. One time was I, I was a Bukhar. I was invited to a certain yeshiva which had a different outlook on life. It was more uh, progressive and towards um, pu- pursuing a more secular path in life. And they brought me proofs from the Rambam and this. I was young and impressionable and even stupider than I was today. Imagine that. And um, I came back to yeshiva and I told the yeshiva what they had said. And he goes to me, he said, learn Torah, go to Alam Haba, Bazel. Right? In other words, after all the philosophy and after all the ideology and after all of this um, talk, right? In the end of the day, when you get to Olam Haba, they're not going to ask you if you know um, Aristotle, and they're not going to ask you if you know Plato, right? Right? It's not one of the six questions. In fact, the Gemara in Shabbos um, says that there are six questions they'll ask you before when you come to Olam Haba. Right? And the Sati Sati Mamuna, etc. Right? And in fact, I remember from the um, Levaya of um, Shem Shem Pinkus, I believe it was. It was either Shem Shem Pinkus or Nelson Bachvogel. Um, I believe it was Shem Shem Pinkus. Um, they said, and it was where Schwarzman pointed this out, um, Rav um, Schwarzman, the son of Rav Dov Schwarzman, the Cardinal Rashiva in Lakewood East. He said, if you look carefully in the Gemara, the Gemara doesn't say that they're questions, right? It says they say to you, "Topaldi v'chachma sepisi Yeshua, sati perivia, sati sati emuna." Yeah, it doesn't say they ask you. It says they tell you, and he says, because in all of Haba there's no things, right? Um, it's complete clarity, and the more clarity you have in these areas, so the more successful you will be when you get there to let you in. And this is something that we really have to keep in mind especially during this time uh, before Mashiach. And I was able to learn for six year, five years um, in, as a bucher under a Moshe Meisman. Complete clarity, right? Complete clarity. In fact, he had about five to ten Rambams, he would say over and over again. And one time I had the audacity to come to the Roshiva and say, you know, Rebbe, like, you just keep saying the same Rambams over and over again, right? And he said, you think I don't know what I'm doing, he said. You'll come back to me in 30 years, right, 35 years, and you'll tell me I was right. And he was right, you know. And that's one thing about Ramosha Meisman. He's always right. Anytime which I had any iota of suffix, I was completely wrong. I was completely right, right? That's what comes from clarity. Clarity brings you to a point where you don't get distracted by side issues, yeah? If you have things clear, and they say in Yiddish, klor viditog, clear as day. If things are clear as day, then you don't have any more svekas. All of the doubts disappear. And this is really what we need as we enter this period, right? As we continue to be in this period of Kavli Mashiach and Ekes of the Mashiach, as we get closer and closer every day to Mashiach's coming, I think everyone will agree that every day is one day closer. We don't know what the day is. Hopefully it's today or tomorrow. Um, but we don't know what it is. But as we get closer and closer, we have to find people like that who have an absolute clarity and learn from them and learn from their teachings and see who they are. You know, he gave a she- he gave a, a shir on when um, on the Walder incident, right? And apparently it got over fifty thousand um, hits, it went viral. And the main point of that shir was just the clarity, right? In case you have any, right? He said, in case you have any doubt, what I um, um, have to say about, um, you know. Uh, Chaim Walder, he said he's a Russian Rosh. And he was clear. You know, there's no there's no room for doubt, maybe this, maybe that. Just absolute clarity. Right? We get caught up. Right? The main weapon of a Malik, yeah, as we said yesterday, is Suffolk. Right? A Malik's main weapon, Hamad's main weapon is Suffolk. Maybe this and maybe that. And maybe you can say this, maybe that. And maybe Hashem did do miracles and maybe not. I saw once a whole book someone put out about Chris Yamsov that 
it didn't. It wasn't really a miracle. Every 27 billion years, um, the stars line, the planets line up, and therefore the fleece splits. Okay, maybe yes, it could be. You know, maybe that's Hashem brought about the miracle. But as Rav Chaz Kalevinstein said, did you ever try to get your kids out for a teol for a trip, right? And if one family takes an hour to get out, imagine getting the whole Jewish people, three million people, across um, a, uh, a split um, uh, a sea. Imagine what that is like. So. Um, this is it. We need clarity. We need Brirus and people like Ramosha Meisman, um, or Shiva. This is somebody we can learn absolute truth from. You know, one time um, he had a check up here in Israel, and there was uh, it was sixty dollars at the time. It was a thousand shekels to the dollar, and the insurance company I made a mistake. Instead of giving him a check for sixty dollars, they gave him a check for sixty thousand dollars. In other words, they gave the shekel equivalent in dollars. And he went to them and said, I can't take this money, it's stolen. Right? Most of us would have thought, well, you know, I'm building a building and I need a house and my kids, you know, a tuition. <coughs> he didn't say that. He said, money, which is stolen, you can't have. There'll be no bracha from it. Absolute clarity. Right? This is what we need in this period. We need absolute clarity. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted by philosophies or politics or things which are antithetical to Torah. Right? Just cut it all away and just have absolute, complete clarity. And this is something we could really strive for. But to do it, you have to be around people who um, who have it. Yeah, who have it. And I was eager to be in the presence um, of Ramosh Meisman. I continue as a Talmud. We, Hashem, I live in Hainov now, and I go to visit him. And it was just like here in the base of Mikdash. Chazal tell us that there were 10 open miracles that happened here in the base of Mikdash, right? When the pillar of smoke was going up, there was a hundred miles an hour wind. It didn't move. Yeah, it didn't move. Um, because you went to the base of Mikdash just for clarity. One of the, the Chazanish says an incredible idea. He says there can't really be an Apikoros today because you can only have a true Apikoros when the base of Mikdash is existing. And people can come here and see the 10 open miracles and still have doubts in the moon. When there's no base of Mikdash, there can't be an Apikoros, right? Because when you're here in the base of Mikdash, there's absolute clarity. You take a bird's intestines, you throw it on the floor, and it disappears, which was what happened um, with the bird offerings of the base of Mikdash. You can't explain this in science. There's no scientific principle. I learned, I went to the Bronx High School of Science. We were never taught why a bird's intestines should be um, in, in um, should be sucked up into a rock. There's no scientific principle to explain that. There's only one way. Ain o novato. Complete clarity, right? And the more you internalize this, the more you cling to people who know this with complete clarity of Ain o Milvado, the more likely you are to be from the people who are Nitzel Michavel Mashiach. Again, I don't want people to get nervous, and I don't want to make people nervous, right? But um, Chazal tell us, Michavel Mashiach will not be simple. It will be difficult. Right? We don't know what it will involve. Hopefully it will be with mercy. The, if you want to be from the people who are Nitzel from Michavel Mashiach, get clarity. Work on clarity. Don't be taken uh, astray by doubts. And if you do that, then you'll have tremendous hatzlacha, tremendous siyat right? The clearer you are, and every gadol that I've been zoicha to know had absolute clarity, right? Not even nayoda. I'll finish off with one point, which Moshe Meisman said many times, right? He said, how do you know if somebody's the real thing or not? How do you know if he's true? He says, if you wake him up, at 2 o'clock in the morning, or 3 o'clock in the morning, or 1 o'clock, whatever time he goes to sleep, yeah, and you say, what do you want out of life? And he say, I want to serve Hashem. It doesn't matter if he's working or learning or whatever he's doing. Yeah, If he says, I want to be close to Hashem, then that's his real ratzim. And this is what um, Yonah says. They asked him, who are you? He says, right, Yir Elohim. I'm a fear, a person who fears God. I'm not, I'm not uh, a rabbi, and I'm not a... Um, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a lawyer. You know, I'm not a uh, Rebbe in yeshiva. I am someone who fears Hashem. That is my identity. That's why I'm not an American, and I'm not a Sephardi, and I'm not a um, you know whatever it might be. You know, I'm not an Australian. I am somebody who fears Hashem, and this is what we all have to work on during these days. Hashem should give us siyata shmaya. A man came here.